Have you ever gone online to configure your truck and all of a sudden what was supposed to be less than $50,000 became 60 or even $70,000? Yeah, I did that too. I do it all the time. And that's one of the problems that we have out there. Now I have a brand new Ford F-150 XLT. And over here, I have a brand new Ram 1500 Limited. So we're gonna talk about the differences between these two trucks and we're gonna talk about the numbers. This is weird. You have a big old 5.7 liter Hemi V8 over here, and you have a twin turbocharged V6 3.5 liter EcoBoost over here. Very different engines, very different powertrains. They both average 19 MPG combined. Isn't that crazy? All right, let's have a look over here at the Ford. Now, Ford has been in the EcoBoost business actually for quite some time now. And this one, puts out 400 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. Woo. As it's configured with that 10 speed automatic transmission and this is a four wheel drive model, it gets 17 miles per gallon city, 23 miles per gallon highway, and as I said before, 19 miles per gallon combined. Now let's have a look over here at the big old Hemi. Now this isn't just a 5.7 liter Hemi, no, it has e-torque. And we've said it before, we don't really find e-torque to be particularly good. It is a very mild hybrid system. Basically the way it works, it kind of gives you a little extra push from a stop and then the engine kicks in and it's supposed to help you with fuel mileage. Once again, we've just never seen it to be very effective. It's also kind of, it works with the starter. It's, yeah, it is. Okay. Anyway, the point is, is that not a lot of choices anymore with ram in terms of powertrains now this one puts out 395 horsepower 410 pound feet of torque we found that the 5.7 to be a very robust flexible engine in its current state four-wheel drive got to an eight-speed automatic transmission 18 miles per gallon city 22 miles per gallon highway so it's interesting to see that both of these engines despite the fact that they're so different two less extra cylinders but there's a twin turbocharger two more cylinders and this e-torque system, they both are as efficient. Of course, that really depends on the driver, doesn't it? Let's talk about the design. I happen to find this particular design for the Ford F-150 to be the most handsome. I love this headlight design and they went for a completely different, more chiseled look than the Ram. And I, yeah, excellent. And it's a two-tone, which is awesome. In fact, they call this blue Area 51 blue, which I get a real kick out of, and I think it's a great color. Fit and finish between the two trucks is not the same. To be honest with you, there's some overspray and some sticker issues here. But the real issue for many of you out there is the fact that this is an XLT. And that means that you're not getting the big wheels. You're not getting the cool tires. You're not getting a lot of that stuff. I do think this is attractive. And bear in mind that this does have many options. As a matter of fact, almost every option that you can get at this level is on this truck. All right. Now, if you are interested in Ford's trim as well, they have several as well. You start off with the XL or you get to the XLT like this one. There's the Lariat, the King Ranch, the Platinum, the Limited, the Tremor, the Raptor, and of course the Raptor R. So several different steps that you can kind of work your way through with Ford's F-150. There is a bottom line here too, which is Ford seems to have a lot more going on when it comes to choice with little things like, once again, the way they designed the front end. That is unique. Not every automaker allows you so many choices when it comes to these types of things. Often it's slightly different headlight or LEDs, something like that. Really different front ends with these Ford F-150s. So there's a lot more choice. Now the Ram, being that it's a night edition, you spend a lot more money. And we'll talk about the pricing in a bit. But essentially what you're getting is a lot of blacked out things. And of course the 22 inch giant wheels. But have a look see around because Ram really has done style in such a way to where all their trucks, I think, look very muscular. 
it's obviously a question of taste. They still sell the classic version, by the way, of the Ram. It is still for sale. And for those of you who don't know, that was built on the old bones of the old Ram. And we even have one. We have Stubby, who's a Ram classic, technically a new old truck. Now, there are several different trims available. This one is, in particular, a limited. But they start off with Tradesman, then the Tradesman HFE, then there's the Bighorn, the Laramie, the Rebel, the Limited Longhorn, the Limited, and of course the very top, which is the TRX. They also have a lot of special editions, you know, the built to serve uh, for first responders and whatnot. Ram has been very good about adding lots of trims and value to their price. However, at the same time, you're spending a lot of money if you get those trims in many cases, and this is a fine example of it. The good news is, for those of you who want a vehicle that has every barrel and whistle, this is it, and you get it almost right out of the box once you add that one trim. As equipped, this one tows around 11,200 pounds, although you have to bear in mind that your tow ratings can change rapidly when you opt for different wheels and even different packages because the weight of the truck can actually increase or decrease. So you gotta keep that in mind. Now this does have a 392 rear end, which means that it's better for towing. There are two different bed lengths. Now this one is the shorter one, which is five foot seven, but there is a six foot four bed as well. So there are only two different bed options that you can get with the Ram. Now the Ford has a 355 rear end, and in this configuration, it can tow up to 13,900 pounds. But remember that adding lots of goodies like this one has could affect that. This thing even has a sunroof on it. Another thing is that Ford beds, they give you more options. So you can get the five and a half foot, six and a half foot or eight foot bed with the Ford. Also different cab configurations as well. Ram gives you two on the new Ram. Ford gives you three. So you have the Super Crew, like this one, you have the regular, and finally you have the Super Cat. Would you believe? Cloth seats. I don't mind cloth seats, personally, but there are a lot of people out there who are thinking, wait a minute, you spent how much and you have cloth seats? But they are heated. Now, the Ford interior has improved vastly over the years. Recently, they had a major upgrade, completely redesigned everything, better fit and finish, better overall quality, and really good things like this. Now this is your optional 12 inch screen. Otherwise, you would get an eight inch screen. Check out the little 75 year, isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. You do have, of course, your internal display here, which I think is very clear, and I'm grateful that they show all of these different types of temperature, Everything else right up there, very easy to see when you're on the road. Probably one of the clearer screens out there in terms of combining regular analog with digital. One final thing about the interior is that this one, because it is the base or one step above the base model, not a whole lot of frills going on here. However, you still do get, and thank you for this Ford, a proper gear lever. I like that. And this is big for me you actually have dials for volume and for tuning. A lot of people out there who like that, and they're good sized. The buttons are good sized. I mean, the, for the heating, air conditioning, vent systems, this is just great. Good buttons, good switch position. All of that is great. And I do like the location of the trailer brake controller. Overall, they really thought hard about what it is to be a driver in one of these vehicles. However, with that pricing, is it worth it to have cloth in such a basic interior? Ah, look at that, there's a step down here. What a surprise with the amount of money you're paying on a vehicle that there's one of these automated steps. I'm not a big fan of those, by the way, with any truck, but I am a fan of this interior. Beautiful, beautiful stitching and piping. You pay a lot of money, but you do get a very beautiful interior. And that's one of the things that Ram has been really good with. They still set the bar with pickup truck interiors, even on their lower models, their base models and whatnot. But we're in a limited. And on top of that, we're in the night edition. 
So, <laughs> you got a lot of stuff going on. Now, overall, it's actually very similar to the Ford, but in different positions. For instance, this screen, obviously there's a horizontal version going on with Ford, and then there's the vertical here. And this is, once again, 12 inch. There is, I think, an 8.3 inch screen available on the base models. One thing I really like is the brake controller position. Ford's is excellent. This one's really good as well. It's nice to have it away from the knee. That's great. The small buttons here and everything else, the reason this exists is because this actually has a four corner air suspension. So it's a lot more advanced than the one that's in the Ford, obviously. In fact, this one comes with coil springs if you buy the regular version, as opposed to the Ford, which in the back at least has leaf springs. You do get volume control and tuning, which I like. Once again, fairly big knobs, but the button location for the heating air conditioning system being over here, I would rather it be somewhere else, perhaps down here, and I do prefer toggles or large buttons. These are decent. And I don't like dials when it comes to transmissions, especially when you're doing a three-point turn. It's just not my favorite. I do prefer Ford's proper lever. With that being said, the eight-speed transmission in this is a good transmission. It's very smooth. And I do like having the four-wheel drive functions all over here. And this has a four-wheel drive auto, which works kind of like an all-wheel drive system. Great for snow. Overall, beautiful place to be. But $10,000 difference between the two of these. You would think that, yes, you really should have an interior that's $10,000 better. I'm just not 100% sure it's $10,000 better. All right, I hope you're sitting down. I hope you're braced. And I hope you haven't had a sip of coffee, or in Roman's case, tea, because you're gonna spit it out. Why? Because I'm gonna show you the sticker for the Ford. Come on over here, look at my thumb. That says $68,755 for a Ford F-150 XLT. Once again, the XLT is just a step above the XL, which is the entry level version of this truck. They basically crammed in every single option you can get. So your starting price for a truck like this, for this package with the 145 inch wheelbase with that color, with four wheel drive, remember this is a four by four, so that definitely pops up the price, starts at $50,220, a little bit more reasonable. And the amount of options, $18,990, which is insane. So what are you paying for? Well, for one thing, you actually pay up for that EcoBoost. That is more expensive. That's $2,735. It's a heritage edition. That's $1,975. And that gives you the all-terrain tires, the 20-inch six-spoke alloy wheels. And then we move on to the Ford Copilot 360, which is $750. The twin panel moonroof, which is $1,495. Auto start stop, $995. The maximum trailer tow package is $2,215. By the way, this truck actually has discounts on it or else it would be over $71,000. So you have to keep that in mind. Once again, the total according to Ford, and this is the MSRP, $68,755. And if you thought the Ford was painful? <laughs> yeah. This one's a little bit more expensive. About $10,000 more. This truck, as it sits, total MSRP, $78,770. That's a lot of dough for a pickup truck. Now, let's talk about what you get for that. Now, remember, this is the limited crew cab, four by four. So that's how it starts. And you get a lot of stuff standard because the base price is $65,985. Then you work over to the customer preferred equipment, 27M group, which gives you the trailer tow group, trailer light. Uh, it's funny, it doesn't really give you the trailer mirrors, Ford does. Anyway, that's a $1,095 package. The clear coat, by the way, is 200 if you were wondering. The night edition, now that's what's gonna give you these big 22 inch wheels, the 12 speaker Harman Kardon premium sound system, 
the sports performance hood, tow hooks, black headlight bezels, $3,995, damn. And then it also has the limited level one equipment group, which gives you the heads up display, digital rear view mirror, which I really do like, pedestrian emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, parallel parking, blah, 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 $3,495. <laughs> And then, it, yes, I, oh yeah, there's also the 392 rear axle for $95. I would have thought that would be part of the tow package group. But nickel and diming you is what all automakers do. And I absolutely, positively believe that you can get a truck as good as this or as good as that Ford for a lot less. The question is, are you willing to lay off and not click every icon that pops up? It's so hard to do because one of the things they do is they'll say, oh, your payment only went up $10 a month or $20 a month. You can afford this package. Yeah, you might want to think about it. I'm not trying to jump on Ford or Ram's case. Everybody does it to you. Toyota, General Motors, Nissan, they all do. You can get trucks that are as good, that are as capable at least, for a lot less money. The question is, when you go online or when you go to that lot and you see all these packages, do you have the strength to say no? <laughs> it's not easy, trust me on this. Fortunately, they're both excellent trucks and everything out there that's comparable to both of these in terms of capability, you can get for a lot less and that's including much less expensive XLT or a much less expensive Limited. Keep that in mind. Thanks for joining me for the Fastlane Truck. This is Nathan. I'll see you next time.